was towards the end of the 1980s that our attention got turned more to the health benefits for humans. And how it transpired was through a challenge that my dad had. And he came into my office one day complaining about a bursitis problem that he had, and periodically he'd have to go in and get a cortisone shot. Well, under his arm, he carried a magazine called Let's Live, and there was an article written by a doctor, Robert Bingham, in there, who had done a significant amount of research on this particular botanic, the Shidegra yucca, uh, for the purpose of helping people with arthritis. And through his double-blind studies, which, by the way, the results have been recorded and documented in the Journal of Applied Nutrition, they found that not only did it help with arthritic patients more than anything else he'd ever worked with, but uh, his double-blind studies also showed that it consistently reduced the blood pressure, triglyceride levels, and also cholesterol. So there was a lot of side benefits associated with it. So uh, in helping my dad, he in turn turned around and, and helped some other. What we actually gave my dad was some of the supplement that we were feeding the hogs. So anyways, oh, several months later they called and said that a friend of theirs had a, they had a son that was in a wheelchair with a very severe challenge with arthritis. And they shared some of this product with them. And he got more benefits from anything he had ever tried before. So my parents were encouraging me to start doing more research from a perspective of, of a health product for humans. So we started working at the University of Calgary with the uh, with the Dr. Sheldon Roth, who was head of their medical science department, and also the chemistry department, Dr. Frank Baxler, professor there. And uh, in the late 80s, we developed the first liquid yucca extract for human consumption uh, ever ever in the world. And uh, and it helped so many people. There were so many people being helped from it that it caught the attention of the Chinese government in 1991, where they went ahead and started doing studies. And they actually spent seven million dollars doing a five-year study with all these were all the toxicity studies, finally sarcoma studies, and eventually all the case studies for that product and a second product that we had also developed. In 1996, they awarded us import permits for both products that they tested and gave us an import permit. Uh, they gave us drug identification number and an import permit. This was the first time ever, and to this day still, those are the only two import permits and drug identification numbers issued for Western-based herbal therapy in the history of this planet. And the significance was is that China, of course, for over 5,000 years, has been regarded as the foremost authority on herbal medicine.